Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss the some important terms which are left and been associated with the water requirement of the crops and to the irrigation engineering. So let's start. So the first term that we are going to discuss that is defined as the crop ratio which is also known as the Kharif to Ravi ratio or the area ratio. Now how is it defined? So we know that each crop it can be grown in a certain area depending upon the season. So the depth of water which is required by the different crop that we have already seen that is known as the delta of the crop. Now out of this Kharif crop and the Rabi crops the water which is required by the Kharif crop the water which is required by the Kharif crop that is more than the Rabi crops. That means if we supply the same amount of water the more area will be irrigated in case of the Rabi crops. The area which is to be irrigated that is generally more than that of the area that can be grown in the Kharif crop. The reason behind that is the delta for the Kharif crop that is more. That means the depth of water which is required for the Kharif crop that is more than that of the Rabi crops. Now the area which is irrigated under the Rabi crops under the same supply of the water let's say that is A Rabi and the area which can be irrigated for the Kharif crop under the same supply of the water let's say that is A Kharif. Now the ratio of these proposed areas in which the irrigation is to be carried out with the same amount of the supply of the water in the order of Kharif to Ravi season that is known as the Kharif to Ravi ratio. That means this will be the ratio of area of Kharif to the area of Rabi and we know that this area of Kharif that is lesser than the area which can be irrigated for the Rabi crops and usually this ratio that comes out to be in the range of 1 is to 2 or which is equivalent to 0.5. That means the Kharif area is generally one half of the area which can be irrigated under the Rabi crops. Now the next term is the paleo irrigation. So as we have seen this growth stage of the particular crop so at the stage of the sowing that means when the seed is laid out sometimes in this initial stages before the crop is sown before the seed is laid out the land which is to be used that is very dry. Now this problem is usual in case of the Rabi crops because these Rabi crops they are grown in the winter season that means usually at the start of the October or at the end of the September. Now the September is usually classified as the hot month and because of that the soil becomes too dry to be sown easily. Now for such cases this soil is moistened with the water. That means what we do, we pre plan the irrigation facilities in such a way that the land preparation is carried out so as to moisten the land in which the sowing of the crops has to take place. So it helps in sowing of the crops. This amount of water which is provided before the planting of the crop that is known as the pre-planting irrigation or or in other terms that is known as the paleo irrigation. So that is the second term. Moving on to the next term that is known as the core watering. Now what is this core watering? Now as I have told you this is the growth stages of the particular crop at this point the seed will be laid out this is the stage of the sowing of the crop at this point the pre-planting irrigation will be done 
when the seed is becoming a plant and it is few centimeters high it has achieved a certain height at that point of time the watering will be done and that will be the first watering which will be provided to a crop when the crop is few centimeters high so that watering the first watering that is known as the core watering of that particular crop now why is that important because it is the maximum single watering which is provided to the crop that means throughout the crop period let's say this is the time scale and the amount of or the length of the arrow that i'm showing that is representing the depth of the water which has been provided so let's say these are the point of time at which the irrigation was carried out that means at which time the water was supplied to the crop so as you can see this is representing the paleo irrigation or the pre planting irrigation the depth which is supplied to the crop for the first time that is the highest and that's why this irrigation is very very important after that it is followed by the waterings at usual intervals that depends upon the requirement by the crop which is generated from the dryness of the leaves of the plant now this depth of water which is provided that is known as the core depth of the crop and the watering which is provided that is known as the core watering now this optimum depth of the core watering which is also known as the core depth that is different for the different crops for example for the crop of the rice this value is 19 cm while for the wheat crop that is while for the wheat crop that is equal to 13.5 cm now there is one more important factor that from the point of time when you have sown the seed the duration within which now from the point of time for from the moment when you have sown the seed to the point when you have applied this core watering this duration that is known as the core period that means this core watering or the sufficient depth of the first watering that has to be supplied within a fixed time period that has to be supplied within a fixed time period so the core watering that must be applied within this fixed limited period which is known as the core period now why is that important because if the plants fail to receive this water which is known as the core watering in time or in the sufficient quantity which is known as the core depth then they suffer a significant loss now this core period that depends upon the climate for example if there is a rainy season then obviously this will be longer but if the season is very sunny in that case this core period will be very less so this core period it is less for the humid climates and more for the dry climates now the two important crops that we are having for the rice crop for the rice crop this core period that varies 2 to 4 weeks and for the wheat it varies from 3 to 8 weeks now this period also includes the time for which for which the watering has to be carried out now as you can see for the rainy season or for the humid climates 
as the natural rainfall will be available that's why this period will be lesser and for the dry climates only the irrigation has to be supplied therefore this period will be more that is how you will differentiate between this core period for the different type of the crops so if we look at the variation of the discharge which is supplied to the field so this discharge is maximum during the core period time so this is the variation of the discharge with respect to time and it is maximum during the duration of the core period at this point it is maximum the next terminology is related to the cash crops now what are these cash crops so a crop which has to be encashed in the market for processing usually the crops that the cultivators grow they are classified in two categories either they are known as the food crop or the non food crop the crop which is consumed directly by the cultivators or by the different consumers that is the food crop and the opposite of it that is the type of crops which cannot be consumed directly by the cultivators they are known as the non food crops now such non food crops they are supplied to the market and in return for those crops they are provided with the certain money they are provided with the certain money that means these crops are encashed in the market as it cannot be consumed directly by the cultivators so such type of crops they are also known as the cash crop so all non food crops are included in the cash crops for example the jute crop the tobacco tea cotton sugar cane these all are called the cash crops because you cannot use directly the tobacco or the tea leaves because the certain processing has to be carried out you cannot directly use the cotton from the flower with from which it is generated the sugar cane that is supplied to the sugar mills for the conversion of the sugar cane into the sugar cube these food crops like wheat rice barley maize which are directly used by the consumer they are excluded from this category and they are the non cash crops the next term that is related with the crop rotation now when the single type of crop is grown again and again in the same land area that is in the same field the fertility of the land that means the nutrients in this soil they get reduced that means the soil will become deficient in the nutrients if earlier there were number of nutrients which were available the type of nutrient which was consumed by this particular crop that will be diminished now in order to enhance the fertility of the land or to make the soil in such a way so that it regains its original structure that means it is able to regain its original nutrients it is necessary and as well as helpful to give certain rest to the piece of the land to to give rest to the piece of the land now how is it achieved so it is achieved by allowing the land to lie fallow that means we do not carry out any activity that piece of the land is kept as it is or the another way to regain the nutrients is by growing the different crops which can complement the previous crop for example if you are aware that the nutrients which are usually found in the soil they are the nitrogen phosphorus potassium 
that is the NPK and in addition to these three all the other nutrients are present. So if a certain crop is consuming let's say potassium from this soil that means this soil will be deficient in this. So meanwhile what we'll do the next crop that should either be demanding the nitrogen from this soil or the phosphorus so that there is certain time available for this soil in which it can replenish or it can recharge its potassium nutrients and if it is possible that you are growing a crop which is releasing this potassium nutrient but requiring nitrogen and phosphorus then that would be good enough and that is how the crops complement each other. Now this method of growing different crops in rotation one after the other in the same field that is known as the rotation of the crops. Now the example of it as you can see that first you grow the wheat then jowar, then gram or you can grow the rice after that in the same field you will grow the gram because this rice that is a Kharif crop and this gram that is a Rabi crop. So after this Kharif crop the crop of the Rabi has to be planted. So this rice that will require the phosphorus and the potassium from the soil while this gram that will require the nitrogen and it will also enhance the nitrogen level of the ground. Similarly this cotton which is the usually the Kharif crop although it can also be grown in the Rabi season then the wheat which is usually the Rabi crop then again the gram then again the gram which is also a Rabi crop but the nutrients required by these crop they will be different but if you follow this pattern then after that the field has to be left as it is that means it is to be left fallow so that the nutrients are recharged and during that time there will be no crop which will be standing in the field. So that's how the nutrients are regained by the soil. Now that completes all the related terms to the water requirement of the crops and to the irrigation. Now in the next video we will solve two numericals based upon the all the theory parts. Thank you.